This week's all new episode of Star Wars Rebels was called Blood Sisters, and it finds Sabine and Ezra being given a special mission by Hera. Now, last week was a very Hera-centric episode, and now Sabine gets the spotlight all to herself, and she really needed it, too. We barely got to learn anything about her from the first season, except for the fact that she loves tagging and loves explosions. Turns out the contact the Rebels are supposed to meet is one of those clunky trash can droids. Droids strangely playing a very huge part in Blood Sisters, but I'll get more in-depth on that one later. The big money shot of this episode is the premiere of Ketsu Onyo, a friend from Sabine's dark past, voiced by Firefly's own Gina Torres. Like Sabine, Ketsu is a Mandalorian. Turns out they both got kicked out of the Imperial Academy around the same time, and they both had big dreams of becoming bounty hunters for the criminal syndicate known as the Black Sun. But their sisterhood quickly died on the vine when Ketsu left Sabine for dead during a job. We are never actually told the specifics of this job, which is sort of unfortunate. Fortunate. Having the Black Sun's money behind her, Tetsu is able to afford all the best top-of-the-line gear, and she wouldn't be a great Star Wars bounty hunter if she didn't have a badass ship to fly. FYI, hers is called the Shadowcaster, and if that is seriously not the most Star Wars thing you've ever heard, then I don't know what is. We also find out this episode Sabine's love of explosions and tagging comes from Ketsu. There's clearly a ton of history between these two, which is really only being glimpsed here. Ketsu has been sent to retrieve the droid, and she proves herself to be a brilliant brutal combatant, single-handedly taking out a ton of stormtroopers with the help of both her blaster and a distended spear. But old friends will be forced to join forces if they ever hope to escape an Imperial blockade. Man, Sabine, I bet you wish you had that awesome ship Hera had last episode, you know, the one built specifically for destroying Imperial blockades? While all the Sabine stuff is super cool on its own, it's Chop who ends up stealing the whole episode with his physical comedy stylings. I was killing myself at his bits. Now, you would think having Having another bounty hunter on the show would mean that the whole of Blood Sisters would be an action fest. It's really not. In fact, Ketsu is shown to be a very human and very easygoing individual who doesn't hold much of a grudge. Despite the two battle-hardened Mandos, the episode ends with the two heroes actually getting out of Dodge by using their brains and not their blasters, while we even get a fun little cameo from R2-D2 as the episode closes out. Blood Sisters was an episode that I really thought I knew exactly where it was going, but it took a hard left and delivered something completely different. Tetsu is a dark mirror to Sabine, one who took the easy way out of life, choosing to stand for nothing but money, while Sabine chose a different path, choosing loyalty. loyalty that is repaid to her all throughout the episode. I do ever think it's a little weird that Tetsu is both introduced and then redeemed all throughout the span of one episode. They don't even play around with the idea that now that she's failed the Black Sun, she will become an enemy of the Black Sun. Overall, I did enjoy it. I just couldn't help but feel that this was a good episode that could have been an excellent episode. Still, at the end of the day, it gets a very high 8 out of 10. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching my newest video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll feel like checking out some more videos I have on offer here at Cape Jewel.